So I'm Melanie Eddy and I'm a jewellery designer and maker. I'm from a really tiny island, 21 square miles, about 67,000 people. It's interesting to be from somewhere that's so small and then to be here in a big city with centuries and centuries of history and heritage. We're in my studio in the Goldsmith Centre and I've been here now for over 10 years. As time's evolved, my approach has become closer to that of a sculptor in terms of the form. The ring sets, which I've become really known for, they're about togetherness, but they're also about individuality. So these sets can be worn by one person, but I've also done wedding bands that share a template so that there's something shared between the individuals, even if they're apart. It's like a hidden message that isn't obvious. It's not just like a detail, it's integral to the form that's made. So you can't have it without that shared thing. Prior to being in the UK and prior to having my own mark, any piece that I'd made before when I was in Bermuda carried the mark of the company that I was working for. I didn't really know of any people, individuals that had their own marks. So my mark is an M and an E in a square. But then I like the idea of M-E, which is me. I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but <laughs> I like that idea of it. So then I stuck with that. That mark ties you to makers who've been making for a very long time. So the fact that that's archived is, is super interesting and super exciting. In the archives of the Goldsmiths Company, we have 47 feet of sponsors mark records. And these go all the way back to 1697. The important thing about registering that mark is it links you to the piece that has been made and makes you responsible for its quality and its purity. And so you have out of these tiny little marks some really big histories and stories emerging. Early hallmarks often included symbols and sometimes they included only symbols. We have one here and this was traditionally known as the goose in a dotted circle until someone had the bright idea that this is not a goose, this is a duck and they linked it to a late 17th century silversmith called John Duck. The Platinum Jubilee mark is commemorating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, so this is 70 years of her being on the throne. What makes commemorative marks different from ordinary hallmarks is the fact that they're celebratory. They're not part of the ordinary legal requirement to test for fineness and that guarantee of fineness. They celebrate important national moments. One thing that is interesting about the implications of including the Platinum Jubilee mark on your work is that actually I've had customers really excited about having a piece being marked in the Platinum Jubilee year, almost like a commemorative or celebratory piece. I actually was a little bit conflicted about it because as someone who's from a dependent territory of the UK. It's tied to, to some uncomfortable truths. It didn't feel right to not acknowledge it. And also because this year is also an interesting year for me in terms of what's happening with my own work. I've come back to my practice after a period of doing lots of different things. I have streamlined so that I can really focus on what I want to do with the work. So in a way, it's a significant year for me as well. One of the really nice things that we see through the inquiries that we get in the archive here is when people have a really treasured family item, maybe a wedding ring, when we can identify that mark for them and tell them a little bit more about that national event that took place and the national significance and the dates and the times of their item, they can link that to their personal stories, to memories of their relatives. And I really think that's what the Platinum Jubilee mark will do for years to come to people who acquire objects that it's marked with.